hallelujah, hallelujah. How many of you know that God is more than able to take care of anything that we have going on? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just continue to give God some praise on this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we give you glory, honor, and praise on today, Lord. You are more than able. You are more than able, God. And we just give you glory on today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. God, we give you honor on today, God. Hallelujah. Because we know that you are more than able, God, to do anything that we have need of on today. Hallelujah. Well, good morning and welcome to St. James Baptist Church. We are located in Durham, North Carolina, and we are committed to connecting communities of faith. We thank you to all of our visitors for tuning into us, uh, to our live stream on this morning. We just thank you for tuning in and joining us for our Sunday worship on today. To all of our St. James members, family, and friends, we thank you for tuning in with us also. We just miss you so very much. We just thank God for you being with us on today. We just want to remind you that you can find us virtually on Facebook, on IG, on Twitter, and on YouTube. We want to remind you to also make sure that you click the like and the love button. If you are on YouTube, make sure you click that thumbs up button. And also make sure that you share the live stream. That is a way for us to continue to make sure that we are sharing the gospel so that St. James may continue to, again, connect community to faith in the virtual space. Now, a reminder that our pastor has launched the virtual Iron Sharpens Iron eight-week intensive that began on June the 21st. It is going through August the 9th. This intensive is designed to pour, refresh, reset, and refine second chair ministerial staff. The focus is sermon development, historical analysis of the text, biblical doctrine, and more. Now, registration is closed. However, if anyone would like to pre-order journals, they can do so by visiting BiancaJRichardson.com. Our Reignite Bible Study will relaunch the first Wednesday in August 2021. This time is being used to reset, plan, and refine going forward as we prepare for a hybrid worship. Now, if you need to contact us, email us for information at, excuse me, information at info at stjamesbc.org, or you can call our office at 919-237-1023, and please be sure to leave a message. Again, it is info at stjamesbc.org, or call our office number at 919-237-1023, and please feel free to leave a message. St. James, on today we have a guest speaker by the name of Brentley Wright. Brentley is the founder and president of Brentley Financial, a growing financial practice focusing on funding small business and church succession planning with a specialty in pastoral financial care. Brentley Financial bases its work on the core belief of being a different kind of practice, one with a heart and service for the leaders we serve. The model for success at Brentley Financial is anchored in relationship building, listening for impact, and partnership in vision and mission. In addition to operating and growing Brentley Financial, Brentley is obsessed with the development of leaders through biblical principles with the hope of expanding God's mission of making more disciples in our society. Also serving on the Accelerating Men Mentorship Board of Directors, Brentley was responsible for shaping the economic direction of the organization and teaching young men ages 10 to 18 financial literacy. Beyond being a business and church consultant, he is in love with his family. He is married nine years to his beautiful wife, Kelly, and two sons, Jaden, who is 14, and Justice, who is six. Brentley is grateful for life, his family, and the God-ordained purpose in his life. Amen? So you all know that Pastor Bianca also likes for us to get all of the preliminaries out of the way. So at this time, we're also going to get ready for the tithe and the offering. So if any St. James member would like to tithe or give a liberal offering at this time, you want to make sure that you follow the directions that have been provided in a shout out or in the church conference by contacting our very own Deacon Ron.
visitors, you are welcome to give as you are led. And if you choose to do so, you can give by Givelify or through our website, stjamesbc.org, and then you can click on Donate Now. There should be a link at the bottom of the screen at this moment. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and give an offertory prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for this hour that we are able, God, to just lift up praises to you on today, God. We thank you for the opportunity to sow into your kingdom, God, through St. James Baptist Church. We know, God, that St. James is fertile soil. We just thank you, God, that we are able to use this tithe and this seed, God, to sow into the kingdom, God, here on the earth, Lord, to continue to connect community to faith. We ask, God, that you would bless those that give on today, God. Bless them, God, beyond their imagination. We just give you, God, praise and honor on today, Lord. And we just thank you for everyone that is able to give monetarily, God. We thank you for everyone that is able to give of their time, God. We thank you for everyone that is even able to sow, God, prayers, God, for us, God. We just thank you and we praise you, God, for your faithfulness to us, God, and for the faithfulness of your people through St. James. We just give you glory, honor, and again, praise on today, God. We just lift you up and thank you. And it is in Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, St. James, you know what time it is. It is now time for praise and worship. So we ask that you would just join in with our guest speaker on today, Mr. Tremaine Graham, and our St. James praise team as we take this service a little higher in the Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, clap your hands and let's celebrate Jesus. Come on, if you know God is great and greatly to be praised, come on, let's bless the Lord. Oh, my son. Say, God is great and greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to his name. God is great and greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord. Oh, 
worship right there. Just stay in worship. We give you all the glory. For you are worthy to be praised. So just type in your chat right now. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Just stay right there. Just a few more moments. Just a few more moments. Just lift up your God. Lift up your God. type of believer. He ain't always been first, but he has been center. And all roads lead back to him. Also give an honor to God and your senior pastor, Pastor Bianca Richardson. What a beautiful spirit she is leading this house. I pray God continues to give you more strength, more endurance, more wisdom, more direction for this place and what this ministry is called to do. Your ministry is about community and connecting community to faith. That's a tall order. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's a tall order and a mission from God. But it can be done through St. James. Keep trusting in God, believing God, and watching God work in your life. And it will come to pass. Lastly, I'll just give honor to my, my wife, my baby, Kelly. She's been with me just through thick and things. We've been married nine years. We're just trying to get better and better day by day. That's all. Day by day. And of course, leading and raising two kings to my sons, Jaden and Justice. Your dad loves you so much. I promise you. Well, there's a word for us today. I won't be before you long, but I do feel that God is leading your ministry in a direction that where you will experience some growth. And as leaders in the ministry, whether you're on the praise team or staff or eldership or ministerial teams, what God is doing in you, he wants to make sure that there's some healthiness in place before he sends the people that he's going to send, the community that you will touch. He wants to make sure some authentic, authentic, authenticity is in place and that you are healthy in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so let us pray. Father, thank you for this time. Use me for your word, your glory. Father, decrease me, increase your spirit in me. Give me precision, Father. Remove my nerves. In Jesus' name I pray that your people get this word. Amen. 
Amen. So there's two words I want to talk to you today about, and it's the difference. The difference. The difference. And the big idea that I want to present today is that there is a difference between professing life in Christ and walking with Christ. <laughs> yeah. There's a difference between professing life in Christ, talking about it, talk, than actually walking with Christ, doing what Christ did, becoming very much Christ-like. And the text I want to tag today is 1 John. Turn your Bibles to 1 John. We're going to go to chapter 2. Verse 6, and we'll walk our way up to verse 6, but I actually want to just lean into verse 6, where it says, The one who says he remains in him should walk just as he walked. The one who says he remains in him should walk just as he walked. Lately, I've been thinking about the journey from spiritual immaturity to spiritual maturity. And that process and that journey that God takes us on from salvation to sanctification and soon glorification. <laughs> what God has saved us is continually to save us and mature us and make him into his image. So eventually we will see his face in glory. Paul sums it up with these words in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. He says, we all with unveiled faces are looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord and being transformed to the same image from glory to glory. This is from the Lord who is the Spirit. What Paul is saying is God is actually making you like him, not anybody else. Contrary to popular belief, I know we want to do our thing. I know we feel that we have this vision that we possibly God could have given us, but here's the reality. God is actually making us like him. He's conforming us, shaping us, and forming us to his image. Because only in his image are we embraced by God. <laughs> only in his image are we embraced by God. So my assignment is today to show that there is a difference, and hopefully as leaders we can recalibrate our lives back to the walk in Christ. That we can go from professing Christ to actually walking like Christ. And I love John because John begins to give us this picture of a candid conversation. John is really, really real uh, in the sense that he's just a straight up pastor. And so he's back in Ephesus and he's talking to some church people. And he's letting them know, you know what, I've probably been around so much. Let me go ahead and make sure you guys are authentic in what you're doing. Now, if you read John with just a natural eye, you'll start thinking that it's just performative works, works-based salvation. But what John really is pointing us to is intimacy with God. He's pointing us to a place of close relationship with him. It's beautiful. And you'll see what John is talking about. Chapter 1, John just begins to just brag. I'm going to catch you up in chapter 2, give you some context. Chapter 1, he just brags about being in Christ and being in joy and enjoying Christ and how he wants the church people to understand and get to this enjoyment and fellowship with God. He says, yo, I got fellowship with God and I actually want you to experience this fellowship with God. As a matter of fact, fellowship with God, he says, now we have because we have fellowship with God, we got light in Christ. We're living in the light of Christ. Now, one thing about living in the light of Christ, it shines on you. And it exposes the good of what you may do in regards to the good works of Christ, but it also shows you your inconsistent behavior. Yeah. The sin that you have in your life that doesn't align with Christ. And so when you're just professing Christ, you actually don't even live in the light. <laughs> John begins to say, actually, you got darkness in you. <laughs> he said, I don't even want you flowing in darkness. I want you flowing in God's light. To be honest with you, he said, I want you flowing in God's light. And then he calls stories. He starts to go down a little bit. He talks about sin. And he's kind of calling them, you know, he's real bold at this. But he talks about some statements. And he says, listen, if you say that you have no sin in your life, 
If you say you have no sin in your life, you're a liar. <laughs> oh, you're a liar. <laughs> oh, he's so straightforward with us. Because, you know, some of us can act like we ain't got no sin in our life, right? You know, we've been walking with Christ for 30, 40 years, and, you know, we didn't got comfortable with God now. We got some understanding of grace and mercy. And, and so now what happens is you take it for granted. And, and you don't have this posture of repentance. And so he leads us into that, but then he talks about confessing that sin and how God will literally heal you. Oh, that's beautiful. He's, he will heal you and cleanse you of your sins. Therefore, we now get to chapter 2. And let's go with verse 1. So we can walk up to chapter 6, uh, verse 6. He says, my little children, I'm writing you these things so that you do not sin. I, I want you to think through one thing. I want you to release your sin to Jesus. Now, the goal is not to be extremely sin conscious, but to prevent sin from taking domination in our life. Hear me. It's not to be extremely sin conscious, but it's to prevent sin from being dominant in your life. John is saying, I want you to prevent sin from being dominant in your life. Sin wants to crush you, cripple you, conquer you, take over you. It wants to regulate your life and bring you in misalignment with, with God's will, with God's way, and true intimacy with God. John is very candid about sin's powerful grip in our life. And he understands that sin will infuse, watch this, unhealthy rhythms in our life with Christ. Unhealthy rhythms. At every problem, the root is sin. The root is sin. Now, now, now as I'm reading this, I'm, I, the Lord is dealing with me and it takes me to, you, you know those two sins, the sins of uh, omission and commission. Right, right. You, you, you know those two sins of commission, you know, those big, bold sins, you know, adultery, fornication, lying, cheating, stealing. You know stuff we all have done before, right? Like, we've always done that before. So go and tap in the chat. I did that. Tap that in the chat. I have done that. I have done it all. Paul said I was a chief sinner. But, but, but we have done that. But what the Lord began to work with me on is these sins of omission. My God. My God. Sins of omission. Repeat this. It's the right things you're supposed to do that you don't do. Let me take it further. It's the God-ordained things you're supposed to do, but you're not doing. <laughs> listen, John, James sums it up in James 4, verse 17. He says, listen, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him is sin. Yeah, for him is sin. So you may not be doing any of these big sins anymore. God has delivered you. You've been walking with him. You're close to maturity. But still, if you assess your life, you're going to start thinking through. There are some God or these things I'm supposed to be doing that I'm actually not doing. Yeah. I'm actually supposed to be forgiving someone. And I'm taking 20 years to do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm supposed to bless somebody, but I won't even pray for them. I know I'm supposed to pray for them. They asked me to pray for them, and I said, you have yet to do it. Yeah, I know I'm supposed to be in church and helping and volunteering and working. It's the right thing to do, but I just ain't done it. That's in sin. The Lord showed me while I was walking through this text that there's a difference between immature and mature believers. And the difference is those who have a daily posture of repentance. Mm -hmm. Intimacy with God, the difference maker in your life between professing Christ and walking with Christ is a daily posture of repentance. For things you know you're not doing and for the things you've done. Every believer must have a daily posture of repentance to walk with intimacy with God. There's no if and buts about it. So John says, listen, I'm trying to talk to you about this sin in your life, so therefore you don't even have it in your life. I want you to prevent it. I want you to be shaken to his image. 
So the question is, are you in a posture of daily repentance? Then John moves us to the answer. He moves us to the answer because he says, listen, if you do sin, guess what? Now, watch this, go to, let's keep going. He said, the one who says, oh, excuse me, that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus the Christ, the righteous one. He himself is the totally sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the whole entire world. This is beautiful news because for us who are believers in Christ, we understand that Jesus can handle it all. Whatever you've done, he can handle it all. He took it to the cross. So when I talk about not being so sin extreme, sin conscious, he died for your past, present, future sins. He knew you were sin. But sin, watch this, is one word definition, Mr. Mark. Futuristically, you're going to miss the mark. You will miss the mark in how you are as a husband. You'll miss the mark in how you are in relationships. You'll miss the mark in how you are as a mother. You'll miss the mark in how you pastor. You'll also miss the mark in your discipleship of Christ. And so a few things that Jesus does as our advocate. He exchanges our sins for his righteousness. But, uh, we notice in 2 Corinthians 5.21, for our sake, he made him to be, uh, he made him to sin who knew no sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus becomes sin. He didn't know sin. So now we can be righteous in him. He heals, confess, he heals, confess sin. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is a powerful one in this effect. That's James 5.16. And then presently. Romans 8, 34, which we all love, that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father and seated for us. That when you do mess up, he gets to go to God and says, I'm pleading on their behalf. Listen to him, I got him. They confessed it to us, and now he's in the seating for us. There is a difference. John points us to the righteous one because, guess what, family? There is no other person on earth that's righteous. Jesus is the righteous one. That should bring us joy. That should bring us excitement. That should inculcate a gratitude and thankfulness in our heart. Secondly, verse 3, watch what he says. This is how we know that we know him and we keep his commands. The one who says, I have come to know him and yet doesn't keep his commands is a liar. Here he goes back again, calling us a liar. And the truth is not in him. The difference between those who profess and those who walk is biblical obedience. <laughs> biblical obedience. You see, the great, see, see, when you got this conversation happening in Matthew 22, 36 through 38, they say, teacher, which is the greatest commandment of the law? He's replied, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Number two, he says, love for one another. Is another commandment. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. By the way you love. By the way you love. So he says, if you are saying that you know me, if you say that you know me, but yet you can't love, yet you can't love me with everything that you got, you're a liar. And the truth is not in you. Now, for my Bible reads, you understand John 8:44. When he's talking about, watch this, you belong to your father the devil and you want to carry out your father's desires. You know, he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. And for them, there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. John drops a dime on us and calls us out of our behavior. He's saying your behavior is mapping that of the enemy, the devil. John wants us to be authentic in who we are with our walk in Christ. But you cannot have behavior that mirrors the devil. You cannot have behavior in your walk for true intimacy that mirrors Satan. He's the father of lies. So therefore, if you're to walk in Christ and be authentic, you can't do what he does. As leaders, this is important because the people who are coming into this building, into this local fellowship, will be full of sin, needing grace, needing mercy, needing the salvation and deliverance of the Lord. But if you're not healthy, you won't be able to help. 
And if you don't walk the walk that God has called you to do, they won't see the difference. And not only will they not see the difference, they won't respect the difference. And we wonder why so many people are leaving the faith. We wonder why the future of the local church is at stake. We're not being a difference. We're not being a difference. Lastly, he talks about obedience. He talks about obedience. Watch this. But whoever keeps his word, truly in him, the love of God is made complete. This is how we know we are in him. I want to see, show you something right quick. God's commandments to us are non-negotiables to keep the relationship intimate, loving, and honest. God's commands to us are not law. It's love. And when you have his commands, he says, watch this, you now become complete in Christ. His love has been perfected, complete. According to Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this, that we, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. I want God's love to be complete in you. I want it to be complete in you. I want you to be the difference, but I want God's love to be so complete and mature in you. I want you to be a mature believer. Backing up what you talk about. Not professing Christ, but walking with Christ. John then says, this is how we know. First, he starts off and says, this is how we know him. Repeat the text. This is how we know we are in him. <laughs> this is how we know we are in him. The one who says he remains in him should walk just as he walked. John is so candid. It's like you got a friend who's messing up, right? And you're like, dog, <laughs> you're messing up. <laughs> There's no other way I can tell you this, bro. <laughs> I don't have to write a 50-page thesis, man, a dissertation to tell you that you're messing up. Man, you're messing up. John is saying, listen, you're messing up. <laughs> I want you to know, I want you to be confident that you're in him. Walk the way that he walked. Watch this. The difference between believers who walk like Christ and those who don't are those who walk like Christ. <laughs> the difference between believers who walk like Christ and those who don't walk like Christ. No cap. <laughs> Big facts. So, right, so, 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 so here's what he said. It was a statement by Gandhi. Gandhi said, you know what? I like your Christ. I just don't like your Christians. Mm. Mm. See, 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 the world sees the difference. If the world starts to read and understand the teachings of Christ from love, grace, mercy, God's wrath, etc., and they see how good of a God he is, and yet you profess him, but you don't live that way. And that's the difference. People don't got a problem with God, they got a problem with us. They got a problem with us. We fake, we phony, we lying. We are not walking like Christ. It's people. Uh, I wrote an article talking about church discipleship several weeks ago, and I asked my neighbor, I said, neighbor, how, uh, how long have you been in Christ? He said, about 40, 50 years. I said, how many people have you evangelized to? He said, that number's low, bro. I said, 40, 50 years? He said, yeah. He said, that, I said, bro, that number's low. It was less than 20 people. Then I asked him a question. I said, how, how, how many people have you actually discipled? Like taught the gospel ways of Jesus Christ, that he embraced it, and then they, in turn, evangelized and discipled somebody else. It was, it was, it was reproductive. He, he said, even lower. 
And I'm not getting to a numerical number. I'm getting to behavior. It's behavior. So let me leave you with this. I know you're probably thinking through, how am I going to be the difference? How can I recalibrate my life to be the difference? I want you to go to John. Turn to John chapter 14. I want to show you something right quick. And we're going to roll down to verse 6. Let's go to verse, actually, let's go to verse 4. <clears throat> so here it is. God is dealing with them and talking about the way to the Father, right? And so verse 4, he says, you know the way to where I'm going. Jesus is talking to Thomas and some of the disciples. Then he says, Lord, Thomas said, verse 5, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Peep this. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you uh, from now on you do know him and you have seen him. Pete this. Thomas is looking for a way. We're looking for a way as believers. Jesus said, Don't look for a way. I'm the way. I'm the way. So your take home today is this to be the difference. Number one, you need to trust the way. Not your way, his way. You want to be the difference? Recalibrate and be his trust and walk in the ways of the Lord. He's the way. No other way. Number two, be satisfied with the truth. Have the truth in you, but don't be a liar. Be truthful. Live in God's truth. And lastly, he says the life. Bury your life in Christ. Bury your life in Christ. That the brothers and sisters, leaders of this ministry, St. James Baptist Church, let me tell you something. You're going to be the difference. And God's going to use you. Let me pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Father, we are pushing our way to be the difference. You want our behavior to map to be aligned to your ways. Biblically, Father. And we know that it's tough, but God, the good news is that you're our advocate and that you will do it for us if we just surrender and obey. And we don't have to perform, God. You did that on the cross. That we can lay our life in you, Father. That we can let go of some sinful ways, Father. And when we miss the mark, we can say, God, we're sorry. And then, Father, we can trust in you again. Father, I'm praying for those in this house, God, that when the community walks through these doors, they see the difference. They know the difference. They feel the difference. They can respect and love and honor the difference. Maybe you're out there watching this sermon today or this live stream in our service and you're wondering, I want to be a part of the difference. I don't fully understand this Christian thing, but it seems like the family here is different. And I want to start learning the ways of God. I've been on my own too long. I, I've been messing up. I've been taking advantage of death. But now you want eternal life. You have an advocate that's been right there for you the whole entire time. He's been using your life to reconcile you back to him. You just didn't know it. He's been blessing you and keeping you and guiding you. So we extend that invitation today for you to accept our beautiful Savior, the Lord of Jesus Christ. He's here for you. He not only wants to be here for you, he wants to transform you into his image. A beautiful image that's worth having to meet him. There's nothing you have done that he cannot heal and save you from. And he cannot forgive. We extend that right now, that invitation. Type in the chat, I want to be saved. Type in the chat, I'm coming to St. James Missionary Baptist Church. I want to talk to Pastor Bianca and the ministerial staff. Type in the chat. 
you'll have some support that gets with you. And I pray for those who are wanting to be saved. Those who are saved, I extend an invitation for you to recalibrate your life. For you to stop professing and start walking. That you preach, practice what you preach. That you literally do what God's called you to do. I want to extend that invitation to you too. Recalibrate. Become the difference. I'll give a benediction and we'll have a last song by our praise team. Father, thank you for this time. You've been so good to us. Father, continue to lift us up. God is direct us, pour into us. Give us your will day by day. Give us clarity, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.